Caleb Gattegno was one of the most influential and prolific mathematics educators of the 20th century. He is best known for his innovative approaches to teaching and learning mathematics, foreign languages and reading. He is also the inventor of pedagogical materials for each of these approaches, and the author of more than 120 books and hundreds of articles largely on the topics of education and human development. Pedagogical Approach Caleb Gattegno's pedagogical approach is characterized by propositions based on the observation of human learning in many and varied situations. This is a description of three of these propositions. Learning and effort Gattegno notice that there is an energy budget for learning. Human beings have a highly developed sense of the economics of their own energy and are very sensitive to the cost involved in using it. It is therefore essential to teach in ways that are efficient in terms of the amount of energy spent by learners, to be able to mathematically determine whether one method was more efficient than another. He created a unit of measurement for the effort used to learn. He called that unit an Ogden, and one can only say an Ogden has been spent if the learning was done outside of ordinary functionings, and was retained. For example, learning one word in a foreign language costs one Ogden, but if the word cannot be recalled, the Ogden has not truly been spent. Gattegno's teaching materials and techniques were designed to be economical with Ogdens, so that the most information can be recalled with the least sense of effort. Certain kinds of learning are very expensive in terms of energy, i.e., Ogdens, while others are practically free. Memorization is a very expensive way to learn. The energy cost can be especially high when the content is of no particular interest to the learner. Memorizing dates in history or major exports of foreign countries is like that for most people. School is not the only place where that kind of learning is found. Learning somebody's name or telephone number is equally arbitrary. We have to use our own energy to make such arbitrary items stick in our memories. The mental glue necessary is expensive, since that type of learning uses up a lot of energy. Not only is that type of learning expensive, it tends also to be fragile. It is typically difficult to remember those kinds of items. Even when we make a great effort, we do not always succeed. We often recognize a face without being able to remember the name of the person. Not to mention all that almost all of us have forgotten much of what we learned at school. It is not unusual for us to forget much of what we memorize. However, there is another way of functioning, which Gattegno called retention. An example of retention is the reception of sensory images. When we look at something, a street, a film, a person, a fine view, photons move from what we are contemplating and enter our eyes to strike the retina. When we listen to something, we create auditory images in a similar way, that is, through energy that enters our system, rather than energy we allocate from inside to memorize an arbitrary item, to retain an auditory or visual image. We have to use perhaps only an insignificant amount of our own to retain it. The amount is so small we are not aware of any effort. Such images are easily acquired and generally remain for long periods. We all have experiences similar to the following examples Gattegno offered. First experience. I recently visited a village in the south of France where I had not been for over 10 years and I was able to say, oh, yes, I know, the pharmacy is over there beyond the bakers, I went to see and there it was, I had made no effort to memorize this village square, it had entered my mind during my previous visits and it had remained there, second experience, I visit a supermarket and go down the aisles. I see an unexceptional woman with a trolley. Three aisles further on, I see her again. I have not tried to remember her, but I have seen her and I can recognize her again a little later. Our system of retention is extremely efficient. We keep in our minds a huge quantity of information simply because we have seen, heard, tasted, smelled or felt it. That ability is part of human nature. It enables us to walk about our town without getting lost, to ski or to read a book. 
Gatekno proposed that we base education, not on memorization, which has a high energetic cost and is often unreliable, but on retention. The learning tools and techniques Gatekno proposed rely systematically on retention. The subordination of teaching to learning Gatekno argued that for pedagogical actions to be effective, teaching should be subordinated to learning which requires that as an absolute prerequisite teachers must understand how people learn. Rather than present facts for memorization, teachers construct challenges for students to conquer. If the student cannot conquer the challenge easily, the teacher does not tell the answer, but observes and asks questions to determine where the confusion lies and what awareness needs to be triggered in the student. The role of teachers is not to try to transmit knowledge, but to engender acts of awareness in their students, for only awareness is educable. Gatekno created pedagogical materials designed to provoke awarenesses. The materials are intended to be used along with techniques aimed at leading students through a succession of awarenesses. As the students progress, teachers who observe their students can see when and how they can induce a new act of awareness. For example, he created words in color for learning to read. Briefly, it consists of a series of word charts using a color code in which each color represents a phoneme of the language. The charts are used to provoke the phonological awareness in students of the sounds they are making and the order in which they are making them thus, engendering all the awarenesses of how the graphemes relate to the phonemes and of how the spatial order of writing reflects the chronological order of speech. Other charts, called fiddles, list the graphemes for each phoneme. He also used this color code in the silent way materials for learning foreign languages to enable students to identify and produce the sounds of the new language. Cuisinaire rods are used, particularly with beginners, to create visible and tangible situations from which the students can induce the structures of the language. The silence of the teacher both gives the students room to explore the language and frees the teacher to observe the students. The teacher is thus able to propose a sequence of pedagogical challenges adapted precisely to the evolution of the student's learning. If I would be remembered for anything, he said in one of his last seminars, it would be that I painted the sounds with colors. In his approach to teaching mathematics, manipulatives, such as geoboards which he invented and Cuisinaire rods which he popularized, a part of a way of systematically developing students' mathematical thinking through the exploration of clear and tangible problems. All the materials created by Gatagno were designed to allow teachers using them to place the accent systematically on the students' learning rather than on what they, the teachers, do. Teachers watch their students deal with the challenges they are given, and provide them with feedback on the trials and errors. Teachers thus actively base their work on the awareness and awarenesses of the students in the here and now. It is therefore very difficult for a teacher to closely follow a detailed lesson plan, since the students are actively exploring the domain and have the freedom to take the lesson wherever they need it to go. The class becomes a kind of guided improvisation in which the teacher launches a challenge at a suitable level for the students and if necessary nudges them into the awarenesses they need to have in order to learn. This is the case whatever the subject being dealt with, and is what is meant by Gatekno's expression, the subordination of teaching to learning. Only awareness is educable Gatekno found that only awareness is educable in human beings. On the path to learning, several awarenesses must be reached. The first is the awareness that there is something to be learned, some unknown to become known. The next awarenesses are triggered by experience with the subject matter. For example, rather than ask a student to write 2 plus 2 equals 4, Gatekno might ask them to create the number 4 in as many ways as possible with colored rods. The student can then clearly see, feel, and describe the characteristics of the number 4. Instead of memorizing 2 plus 2 equals 4, the student has had a mathematical experience and become aware that 4 can be broken into parts, and that the process of breaking apart and putting together can be described in several ways. 
We are constantly becoming aware of new things. When it is something significant, the awareness is often audible in the form of the R, ah, so typical of an important realization. However, most realizations are made much more discreetly. Indeed, as we live our everyday lives, we become aware of all sorts of things at great speed throughout the day. The price of bananas, that these bananas are not ripe enough. That the price of the yogurts has been reduced because they are close to their sell by date. All our life is a succession of tiny awarenesses. Until we become aware of something, that thing remains totally unknown to us. As soon as we become aware of it and integrate it into our lives, we often no longer pay attention to it. But, the moment of realization, the act of learning is an act of awareness. The role of the teacher in acts of learning is not to inform their students of this or that piece of information, but to help them to discover it, to perform a conscious act to become aware of it. Gatekno suggests that learning takes place in four stages which can be described in terms of awareness. The first stage consists in a single act of awareness. The realization that there is something new to be explored. As long as I am unaware that there is something to be known, I cannot start to learn. The second stage. As soon as I start to learn, I have to explore the situation in order to understand it. As I am not yet an expert in the field, I make many mistakes. These mistakes enable me to progress because by observing what happens and becoming aware of it I can adapt my attempts in relation to the feedback given by the environment. This stage ends when I know what I have to do, but I only succeed when I am wholly present in what I am doing. The third stage is a transitional stage. At the beginning, I am able to do what I want if I pay attention at each instant. At the end of this stage one no longer need to pay attention. The new skill has become completely automatic and because it is automatic, I am free to give my attention to learning other things. The fourth stage is that of transfer. For the rest of my life, what I have learnt can be used for all the new skills I may wish to acquire. When I learnt to run, I used the know-how I had acquired from learning to walk. Both of these, walking and running, were useful to me when I decided to learn cross-country skiing. Each skill remains available, except in the rare cases of accident or injury, for a lifetime. Timeline 1911 Caleb Gatekno was born in Alexandria, Egypt, on November 11, 1932 Mathematics teacher at the Lycée Français in Alexandria until 1936. 1937 earned a doctorate in mathematics at the University of Basel. Les cas essentiellement gaillardes des équations de Hamilton Jacobi intégrables par séparation des variables. 1944 began publishing books and articles in scientific and other journals. By 1988, he had written about 120 books and 500 articles. 1947 began running seminars for international groups, mainly in Europe, in North and South America and in Japan. He continued these seminars until his death. 1948 earned a Master of Arts in Education at the University of London. 1951 founded the International Commission for the Study and Improvement of Mathematics Education. 1952 earned a Doctoress Lettre at the University of Lille. 1952 founded the Association for Teaching Aids in Mathematics, which became the Association of Teachers of Mathematics and its journal Mathematics Teaching which is published four times a year. In 2011 the ATM conference celebrating Gatekno took place from Monday 18 to Thursday 21 April at Wolverhampton University, Telford, England. 1952 participated in the founding of the Société Belge des Professeurs de Mathématiques d'Expression Française and its journal Mathematica et Pédagogia. 1952 worked with Jean Piaget translating two of Piaget's works into English. 1954 founded the Cuisinaire Company in England and was director until 1986. 
1957 member of a United Nations mission to Ethiopia with the object of finding a solution to the problem of illiteracy. 1961 The release of the film Mathematics at Your Fingertips. 1962 First English edition of Words in Color released. 1968 Founded Educational Solutions in New York where he lived until his death in 1988. 1971 began publishing the Educational Solutions newsletter five times a year until 1988. 1988 died in Paris in two weeks after having run the seminar Le Mystère de la Communication near Grenoble. Bibliography The Gatégno Geo Boards in Bulletin of the Association for Teaching Aids in Mathematics and Degree 3 with Georges Cuisinier, Numbers in Color, Heinemann. Now Johnny can do arithmetic, educational explorers, reading, words in color, teacher's guide, educational explorers, reading, towards a visual culture, out of bridge in Deanstree, New York. What we owe children, the subordination of teaching to learning, out of bridge in Deanstree, New York.